This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today I will be welcoming back Sharon Baird. You all know her as Sharon from the Mickey Mouse Club, the Mouseketeer. We're going to be celebrating the 45th anniversary of Ralph Bakshi's The Lord of the Rings animated movie, in which she was Frodo in that movie. And it's going to be a great conversation today. I was just thinking to myself, God, I'm trying to get, I was trying to get somebody for the 45th anniversary of The Lord of the Rings. I talked to Jerry Mansfield last month, and it was just one of the things that she did that we talked about, but I wanted to actually celebrate the 45th anniversary. So I thought, ah, get Sharon back. You know, thanks to Lori Jacobson. And um, maybe touch on some Croft stuff that we didn't touch on last time and stuff like that. It's going to be a great conversation. I mean, she's Hollywood history uh, going back to when she was a kid. And I enjoyed talking to her the first time. You know, the first time I was really nervous and I had just gotten back from vacation and I was tired and just not in my element. But now I'm well rested. I got plenty of coffee in me and I am ready to go. So yeah, here is my new interview with Sharon Baird. You rang, Tommy? Hey Sharon, welcome back. How are you? Okay, how about yourself? I am just spectacular. You know, the the world keeps on turning and getting stranger, but at least we have laughter. <laughs> we have what? At least we have laughter. Oh, of course. Thank goodness for that, because, yes, the world is getting stranger by the moment. Yes, it sure is. So, can you believe it's been 45 years since Ralph Bakshi's The Lord of the Rings? Uh, no. <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes it seems like things just zip by, you know? Yeah, yeah. As as you, as you told me last time, you know, you were one of the first Frodos, and uh, you called it Frodoscope. <laughs> right, right. Yes, and um, you told me uh, you filmed on location for three weeks in Spain, and you wore all white. And how did you get cast in this? Um, let's see. I, listen, that was forty-five years ago. I, have a hard time remembering sometimes what I did last week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, just a group of us were set out on a call. Uh, Ralph Bakshi liked the shape of my face, I think, of, because I have a chin that comes down long. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the thing that helped get me the part. Did, did, you, did you work on Fritz the Cat before that? No. No. Uh -uh. Okay, because my friend Terry Bolo, who's been a stand-in for many years for like children roles, because she's little like you, she uh, she told me she worked with you on a project, and she thinks it was it was Fritz the Cat. No, I didn't work on Fritz the Cat. What's her name? Terry Bolo. Terry. Terry Bolo. Yeah. Gosh, I'm sorry. It doesn't ring a bell for me, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah, she uh, she's one of the founding members of the Groundlings, and um, she's just uh, a big part of Hollywood history, as you are. But, uh, yeah, she had mentioned that earlier uh, to me. Um, but, yeah, so, like, it was you and many of the uh, little Croft regulars, like Felix, who's no longer Hi. with us, and Billy Barty and Patty Donahue and Jerry Marin. Patty so, Maloney. Yes, uh, yeah, Patty, Monley, uh, pa Patty Maloney, not Patty Donahue. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> yeah, so like, so like, um, Ralph Bakshi, like, like knew who all you were and stuff, and like you were the the, the little people in town, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. I remember uh, when we were in Spain. Did I tell you this? That they used uh, local citizens for extras. Oh no. And I'd come out of the hotel in the morning, and there they'd all be with their, I think they're called botas. Mm -hmm. They're those leather shoulder, they look like a shoulder purse, but it has wine in it. And they'd spend the day <laughs> with their boda shooting wine that comes out the bottom uh, during the day while we were shooting. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, I, I talked to an actress recently, uh, Jerry Mansfield, who was the rotoscoped um, princess Galadriel. <laughs> and she she told me Ralph Bakshi's daughter sent her a still of her on set um, in costume, and she couldn't get over how the the animated version does not look anything like her <laughs> in real life. <laughs> does d- d- do you have any uh, on set stills of you in costume? I have one of me when we were in Spain. It wasn't on the set. Mm-hmm. Uh, on a horse with a white cape with a hood and a white wig mm-hmm. and uh, white makeup. Yeah. And I, I said, I rode up to a gorge and stopped at the gorge. And on the other side of the gorge was like eight horsemen mm-hmm. um, looking like fighters. I have one still of that. Uh huh. And it doesn't look anything like Frodo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, uh, have you made replicas for it for when you go to conventions? No, but I should. <laughs> yeah, you should. I'm sure. I'm sure you'd get Lord of the Rings fans coming to your table sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I'll do that. I'm going to go to one soon, and I, I think I shall do that. Yeah, I saw an, an onset still of uh, Trey Wilson and a couple other actors um, in, in characters and stuff. Did you work with Trey Wilson? I remember flying into Spain after I had worked 24 hours on some kind of pilot for um, sort of like a Star Wars thing. Mm -hmm. And so I remember sleeping on the plane flying over there. Trey Wilson and Paul Gale were already there. They had gone earlier. They flew to, we went to uh, Madrid. Mm -hmm. And then, then... and the next day, we went to Moto del Cuervo, where we shot the film. Right. Um, so, yes, I worked with both Trey and Paul. Yeah, we, uh, we lost uh, Trey Wilson way too soon. He was so I good. And I don't know what happened to Paul Gale. He, he did a few uh, crop things with us. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure he's he's still out there, and maybe he's you know retired and stuff. I'll uh, I'll I'll research that. But um, yeah, I mean Trey Wilson was a very talented guy. He was so good at playing, you know, uh, Southern businessman. <laughs> right, right, yeah. He he was a very nice guy. And I remember one day we went to um, El Greco Museum in uh, Toledo. Mm-hmm. And um, I bought a print in, in Toledo and still have it hanging here in my house. Yeah. I wonder if uh, Bakshi owns any rough cuts of his rotoscope movies without the animation. That would be interesting to see. Mm. Uh, yeah, it would be a kind of thing maybe he didn't. But um, <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I think he was getting sunburned and I bought him a, a hat to wear because we were outside in the uh, elements mm-hmm. but it was too small for him so he gave it back to me and I brought it home for my father <laughs> <laughs> I love it yeah. yeah one of the things I love about the movie is that the um, animated characters move like humans which is why it's it's rotoscope but I, I like how the animation makes it look kind of hypnotically haunting you know uh huh uh-huh. It's it's one of the things that's just so great about Bakshi's vision and everything that he's ever done. Um, yeah, I thought he, he was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Did you have to do anything uh, crazy, like uh, do the sword fight or anything like that? Uh, I guess I think I did. I had a, um, a um, oh, what do you call that, an instructor that helps you with... with um, Oh, stunts. Right, stuntman. Yes. I also remember being on a horse in the, <laughs> inside the studio and it <laughs> got skitsy and started running towards the wall and I couldn't stop it, but it did stop on its own, just screeched as it got to the wall. I was panicked there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine where that would be kind of scary. How how was uh, Bakshi as a director? Oh, he was great. He 
was great. I, I, I really liked him a lot. I mean, as we know, you know, he's the master animator, but, like, I mean, how is he working with actors? Oh, he was great. He, he was fine. He <laughs> would yell out stuff. Only one time I remember I was sitting, and he yelled out, Frodo, take that apple. <laughs> Eat that apple. Make another bite. I mean, he, he knew what he wanted and what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did, yeah, because I didn't know if he you know, was like an actor's director or he was just, you know, just do it, you know, kind of a thing because the animation's going to be over it later, you know? Uh-huh. No, it was, a, it was a little bit of both, a combination of him giving directions and letting us do our thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by this point, you know, he had done all these more adult-oriented cartoon movies like Fritz the Cat and Coonskin and Heavy Traffic and Hey Good Looking, but this was probably, like, the first real... Uh, family-friendly one he did. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you remember anything about Saul Zantz who produced? I remember him sitting there, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, he, he was more quiet. Yeah, he was coming off of producing Creed's Clearwater Revival, and he had just done One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which was the same studio, United Artists, and stuff, and... Yeah, pretty big at that time. Pretty powerful. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, he was nice, but he was just more reserved than, than uh, Ralph Bakshi. Mm-hmm. This, this movie holds the record for the longest animated film in history, because most animated films are like 75, 80 minutes long, but this is 2 hours and 13 minutes. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I can't think of a single one um, that's, that's as long as that, as uh, Lord of the Rings is. Yeah, oh. and, I, and I read too. Uh, Bakshi was in, unable to get the rights for Led Zeppelin's music. He wanted Led Zeppelin's music badly in the movie. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that uh, the, the 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 music that was used is perfect for it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, that makes it. I can see that he would want that. Yeah, <laughs> and this was also. Um, Tim Burton's first movie as an animator, he was like, um, I think a student at Cal Arts at the time or something, and ah. he did animation, yeah, for this movie. Uh -huh. Did you did you attend a uh, screening or premiere for the movie? No, uh. -uh. But you went. To, you, did you go see it in the theater? Yeah, but it, it, yes, but no, we we weren't invited to the screening. <laughs> Yeah, do, do you remember uh, how you felt when you saw it all put together? Oh, I liked it a lot. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that, do you think a lot of people liked it? Yeah, and it's amazing um, how many people have really seen it when they hear, you know, that I had done, uh, done the film. They were in shock and they had seen it. I had, when I go to conventions. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think because the trilogy came out in the early 2000s, I think that's why uh, the, the movie has become a, um, a, cult, a cult classic, you know? Right, right. Yeah. I, I prefer the cartoon movie over the actual movies. I thought that they were way too long, and they were just, you know, there was a lot of just talking and walking <laughs> in those movies. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying. Well, of course, I'm partial. Because uh, I have memories of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> was, was there a rap party for the movie? A rap party? Yeah. No. 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 That's interesting. So, I might be interviewing Sid Croft soon. Oh, you might. I love Sid Croft. Yeah, we were actually looking at today, but I, ne I never heard back from his assistant, so obviously it's not going to happen today, but it's going to, we got, we got the ball rolling on it and I'm pretty excited, you know, cause he's, he's a living legend. He's still out there. Yes, he is. Indeed he is. Now, last year I talked to Johnny Whitaker and he was telling me about the fire that broke out on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Were you there for that? I absolutely was. I was big daddy. Yeah. So like, like, what do you remember that, how it happened? 
costume <coughs> with mm-hmm. an octopus, and it was heavy down around the uh, feet because of the tentacles, and they were heavy rubber, mm-hmm. and it was a costume you could not get in and out of yourself. It zipped up the back, right. and um, oh, what's his name? Was the star of the show Rip Taylor? Yes. With his green makeup wasn't right, so they mm. <laughs> had to call him back to the makeup session and so I asked the wardrobe girl if she could unzip our costume so we could get some air for a moment. Mm-hmm. Good thing I did because <clears throat> the uh, cave with all of the um, moss, rubber moss that was hanging down, mm-hmm. <clears throat> all of a sudden the, what do you call that, the three walls behind mm-hmm. were um, blue sky and then they put the uh, scenery in front of it so all of a sudden all three walls sounded like the lighting of a gas log only a thousand times <laughs> louder Oof. and all three walls were on fire and <clears throat> so we all had to turn and mm-hmm. run towards the door Mm -hmm. and as we got out of the door the wall exploded from the studio um so if we hadn't unzipped that i don't know what would have happened yeah oh my god that that has to be the scariest like one of the scariest moments of uh, your whole career oh absolutely from then on every time i walked into a big room or went shopping i'd look to see where the exit were, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's amazing how quickly fire takes over. Yeah, because, like, and we all ran down the street, and our, what you wear under those costumes was like a little muslin short jumpsuit, mm-hmm. and we were all running down the set boulevard to the, um, Formosa, mm-hmm. I can't believe I can remember the name of it, the Formosa, and sat and watched it on TV. We watched it burn down. Oh my God! Yeah, because Johnny told me that him and Scott had just left um, the uh, the studio school, and you know they come into you know the, the 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 studio set, and everyone's going crazy, running and screaming, and like they had no idea that this was going to happen. Uh-huh. Well, Rip Taylor <coughs> was dressed all in green. He had on green uh, friends on his feet, and he went running down Sunset Boulevard <clears throat> into his hotel when he <clears throat> went up to the desk. <clears throat> he said that he mm-hmm. wanted his key, and, and the guy at the hotel said to him, are you coming or going? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. Uh-huh. That was a that was a, a, a horrible year for Sid and Marty because that around that same time they had their theme park in Atlanta that ended up going under. Uh, did you ever go there? I spent three months there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, it was a great, great place. With the it had I think the largest escalator going up. Yeah. Oh my God! What a what a, what a, a, a waste of money for you know for it to, to crash like that though you know in in terms yeah. of I think sales. It was three stories. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I did appear there. In fact, I just last year I did the um fiftieth anniversary of the cross. Mm-hmm. Or Rinda, California. Yes. I, I invention there. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go there, and um, unfortunately I couldn't make it, but I wanted to see you and Butch and a couple other people. That, that Johnny I know. Whitaker was there, too. Johnny was there, too. Yeah, in fact, and I... Patrick, and then um, uh, Kathy Coleman. Yeah. And Wesley Ewer. Wes. From Land of the Lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I, me and Johnny talked just before he made that appearance, and I was going to go, but something came up, though. But uh, hopefully they'll do it again this year. Uh-huh. 
Um, I, I was on YouTube and I watched some episodes of the Bay City Roller Show, and oh my God, it was exactly what I ima- imagined. Very campy, very seventies. Back when they gave everyone a variety show, uh, oh my God, like that must have been fun, was it? Yeah, with Martha Ray. Uh, let's see. I watched the pilot. Was she in the pilot? I can't remember. Oh, uh, Martha Ray was Becca Loose. Oh, okay, yes. You watched uh, Bay City Rollers. Yes, Bay City Rollers. And uh, the very wonderful Louise Duart was on there. I've talked to yes. her. Yes, Well, she, she also played Witchy Poo when we went on tour in New York. Mm-hmm. She played Witchy Poo, <coughs> Billy Hayes' part. <coughs> Yeah, she she is so funny, and she loved my celebrity impressions that I did for her. <laughs> well, Charles Nelson Riley was he in the Bugaloos? He was on Lidsville. Okay. Mm-hmm. That guy was funny. Oh my God, he was laugh out loud funny. Yeah, he was. <laughs> and very few people know he was a very well respected acting teacher. Yeah, I've talked to at least one of his students. I can't remember who, but she told me... That, I remember it was a woman. She told me that he was just a fantastic acting teacher, and he took acting very, very seriously when he taught it, you know, and no one would, would think that a guy as funny as him who was on all those game shows would be a, a serious acting teacher, but he was. Mm. Well, didn't he do uh, didn't he do Broadway? He did. Yeah, he did Broadway. I remember one time he was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and they were doing this sketch where Johnny was uh, trying to, um, um, you know, go through customs at the airport, and Charles Nelson Riley is the uh, the customs guy, and all this funny stuff starts happening, and then he 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 says he he tells Johnny that he has to ask him all these these series of important questions, and all they are is just random stuff, you know. I remember one of the questions was, "Is your belly button an in or an Audi?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Martha Ray mm-hmm. was uh, in the Beckaloos. Yes. Yeah. What was she like? Oh, well, she she was a hoot. She would. <laughs> Um, invite you into her dressing room along with her uh, assistant uh, and have hors d'oeuvres and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then during the week, she'd call you and say, uh, I want you to come and meet us at this restaurant. So-and-so is performing there. Mm-hmm. I'd say, oh, I can't. I'm busy right now. No, we're staying here until you get here. and We're not leaving. She would insist that yeah. you come and join them. But she would call us, the the cast. What did she call us? For, I forget what name she used for us, but we were, we were a little group. And so it was Joy Campbell and myself and a um, couple of other people. Couple of other other us, and uh, we'd go and have dinner. And uh, uh, Billy Eckstein, I think, one time was there. Uh, and she was a hoot. Yeah, uh, Lenny Weinrib was it was in a lot of the Croft shows. Uh, what was he like? Well, of course, he was hilarious. Yeah. 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 His his daughter is a voiceover artist now. Oh. Yeah. I, I remember him as um, Scrappy Doo on the the Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite of the Croft series you were on? Oh boy! I don't know the one. It's hard to say. Whatever I was doing at the time was my favorite. Um. Because I used to say I didn't get the, I got all the glamour roles, Funky Rat, Stupid Bat, and Raunchy Rabbit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been hot, though, to be in those costumes all the time. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, although they say that it was good for your skin, but um, <laughs> I also could eat whatever I wanted because didn't gain any weight, but, um, yeah, it, it, it would be really hot. 
that, and then under the hot lights, and then dance. Um, I used to say, <laughs> I want to be buried in crushed ice. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Over the last you know few years, we've lost a lot of great people, especially people you've worked with in your career. But uh, last September, we lost uh, Gallagher. And I remember as a kid running his Showtime specials on VHS, and there was one that you were on called Over, the Ra- Over, Over Your Head. Right. I remember that myself. Yeah. How did you meet Gallagher? Um, actually, through... Louis Dupron, do you know who Louis Dupron was? I've heard that name. Dancing teacher. Uh, worked with um, all kinds of stars, uh, Donald O'Connor or whatever. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, Gallagher contacted him because he wanted someone who was short that could dance and teach him some t- steps and wear this costume on his show. And it was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a costume with a guy with his head up his behind. Yeah. <laughs> and over. And so, <clears throat> Louis, Mr. Dupron recommended me. So that's how that, that situation happened. And so we, he was, <clears throat> he, he did this in an unusual way. Yeah. He would go to several different bars or restaurants and places to perform and he'd perform for like three hours breaking in different material to see what would work and what wouldn't yeah and so then by the time we did the video in um, Belmont Texas or Beaumont I think it was called Beaumont Texas he knew what material worked and what didn't yeah he, yeah, he did, you know, 14 Showtime specials. He holds the record for Showtime, whereas George Carlin holds the record for HBO. He did 14 for HBO. And, you know, he, he, I remember there was a few specials there where he didn't have much material, so he would get people to come and do things. Like, uh, he got Bill Kirkenbauer to do some stand-up on one, and he got you to come on this one. And, yeah, like, you go out there and you're wearing that navy blue suit, and you start tap dancing in heels for, like, one minute. And, like, the audience was, like, digging you, like, really digging what you were doing. Yeah, well, when we were in Las Vegas, they couldn't see me. Mm-hmm. So he had them bring out this table, mm-hmm. and he put me up on a table so the people could see. The way the um, room was set up, it was on an angle, you know? Mm-hmm. So he he had a, a way with words. He, he was yeah. constantly reading. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was, I mean, he could get pretty politically incorrect in his, in his stand-up. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, but like, um, you know, he did the uh, the smashing, which, by the way, you come out there at the end with the raincoat on and you start handing him things to smash. <laughs> hey, well, he told me I could wear anything I wanted. Yeah. So I said, this is what I want to wear. <laughs> that, that worked so brilliantly. Yeah, because you were handing him lettuce, grapes. Um, I think he smashed an old popcorn machine or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did you remain in touch with him long after? No, I, I did not. Yeah, he, you know, he was the number one touring comedian for over 20 years and once his brother stole his identity, stole his act and they went to court, you know, he got really bitter and like d- during the last, you know, decade or so, every time he did an interview, someone would would tell him how much they they love him and he would just get really rude and he would end up leaving the interview early it was really really sad how the, the guy went from being on top to just being bitter like that it really was i know was it his brother or cousin his brother his bro- okay uh, okay he looked just like him i i think he was a couple years younger than him and they weren't twins no 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 i mean if they were they weren't uh, they weren't maternal twins 
But um, the yeah, I mean, he looked just like him, and like he was trying to get started in, in comedy too. And you know, Gallagher said, "Okay, you can do these jokes of mine and stuff, right? But that's it. You can't smash anything." But then he started smashing everything, and then started passing off as 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 Gallagher, and it just got into a huge legal battle. I think that happened right after he was on one of those daytime talk shows, because that's how I became aware that his brother was doing that. Yeah, that's awful, huh? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's sad, but I'm glad you got to do that with him, though, because he was great in his prime. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yes, I've had many interesting um, jobs, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, after we talked last time, um, Lori connected me with Beverly, and like you... Very best friend. Yes, and her and I have become very good friends. Uh, I got to see her at a convention last August. Uh, she uh. came She came to the Bay Area, and I, I went down there and met her. And um, we talk on the phone at, at least, you know, once a month or, so, or something now. Uh-uh. Uh yeah, I, I just, I can't believe that. I never thought I'd be friends with the little sister and old yeller, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we met. Yeah, that was like the, the time that uh, you were doing the Musketeers and she was right. doing Old Yeller. All right, we've been friends ever since through marriages and divorces. And um, we're going to go to a convention in uh, April, I think it is, back in Missouri. Nice, nice. Yeah, um, she, yeah she's just so wonderful. And she we're loves. We're going to Las Vegas actually in a couple of weeks. Just uh, spend a week there with her. Oh, I thought you were in Las Vegas. No, I'm in Reno. Oh, Reno. Okay, well, still Nevada. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, she. Yeah. I. I. We. We talk on the phone. You know. I tell her. I tell her dirty jokes, and she laughs. laughs. <laughs> she's. She's a lot of fun. Oh, she is. I know. Yeah. So, uh, do you still work at the salon? No. Uh, COVID retired me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was that a long time coming? Well, I hadn't planned on it. Uh, yeah. Well, I wanted to retire when I was 80, which I am now, but mm -hmm. I hadn't planned on leaving. I hadn't notified clients or done anything like that, but no, <laughs> I'm retired. Yeah. How, how's the COVID situation been for you overall? Uh, well, last year I was supposed to go to it in Missouri, mm -hmm. had my tickets and everything, and I got COVID, so I couldn't go. Oh, and got, how long did the COVID last for you? About three weeks. Oh, God, that's awful. Yeah, um, I had a really bad 24-hour virus, or actually it was like 48-hour virus back in May of 2020, and we were we were damn sure that I got COVID, but I got tested and I didn't have it. I think it was maybe stress or something that, that caused it, but it was pretty bad. My throat was really, really sore, and I couldn't um, taste anything for a couple of days. I, I, I really thought I had COVID, but thank God I didn't. Yeah, oh, it zaps your total energy. I'm telling you. Yeah, I had um, uh, I, I had my triple vaccination and all of that stuff, and knock wood, I've been very lucky. You know, I mean, I I still wear a mask every now and then. Uh huh. Depending on where you go. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't go out much. You know, I haven't since 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 the pandemic uh, happened overall. But uh, when I do. Always make sure I got my mask because I I don't want to catch anything and I don't want anyone to catch anything from me, you know. Oh, exactly, exactly. If I have anything, so you're going to be at that con in April. Is there any other ones? No, I I may go to the Hollywood one. I'm not sure yet. Oh, the Hollywood show. Um, the one in February uh, in June. Oh yeah, they they have one this weekend, and then the next one I believe is in June. Yeah, I'm thinking about maybe the one in June. Yeah, I uh, I was gonna go to the one in May 2020 that ended up getting canceled because of the pandemic. I was looking forward to meeting the entire, almost the entire cast of Grease. They were gonna be there. Oh. 
yeah, and I still haven't I still haven't gone to the Hollywood show yet, but someday I will. But um, well, a couple of years ago, I went with um, Bobby and Tommy, and we did a mini Musketeer reunion. Nice. <laughs> do, do 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 you talk to uh, Sherry Alberuni? Uh, not as much as I used to, but we're, we're good friends. Yeah, I talked to her maybe about four or five months after I talked to you last, and her and I, we had a ball. I mean, she has a great sense of humor, and it was... Was she deaf? Gee, I didn't notice. (laughs) It was a great talk, and um, we were connected for a while on Facebook, but I think she's dropped off of Facebook because I don't see her connected. So, yeah, I I wish her well, and I, I really enjoy talking to her. Yeah, she doesn't really do the, uh, the the reunions and the signing shows, does she? Uh, she did. She did one when the um, Disney uh, fan club did one. Mm-hmm. But no, she doesn't. Have, uh, the, so, have you gone to uh, MouseCon since last time I talked to you? No. Uh-uh. Yeah, because I remember uh, you, you, you first told me about it, and um, I've seen it uh, advertised a few times uh, since then, and um, I haven't had a chance to go to that one, but that looks that looks like it's a lot of fun with all the Disney people. Yeah, well, they don't have us do that much anymore. Are mm. you talking about D23? Uh, M- Mouse Con, it was, I think it was in like Concord or Oakland or something. They they may have it in another state too. I don't know. Oh yeah, yes. Uh, I I went to one and I haven't been to any since. No. Oh, okay. I've not been asked. I remember that it was it was open. Have you ever thought about writing a memoir? <laughs> uh, several people have asked me that, but I, I'm not really good at writing. Well, you can get someone to help you—a ghostwriter or something. Yeah. Because you've got you've got great stories, you know, and we're at this point now where new new content is oversaturating the old content, and people are starting to forget the old content. And that's why people like myself and so many others out there are preserving this oral history, you know, about the old showbiz. Well, yeah, I was going to say that people wouldn't even know what I was talking about. I mean, <laughs> if you said Eddie Cantor, they'd go, huh? Yeah. <laughs> if you say the Beatles, they go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Did you work with the Beatles? No, but I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I, it's crazy. So, like, you know, um, I think more, I think, you know, we're, I mean, a lot of people are writing books these days, you know, but, like, yeah, I think I think people need to keep writing books because, you know, these, these younger generations, they need to learn this stuff because they're starting to do revisionist history, you know. They're starting to say, oh, that was offensive in the past. We need to get rid of it, you know. <laughs> Right, right. I know. Yeah, but I, I seriously think you do have great, a, a good story, but it's just it's just a, a food for thought, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been told that before. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon, thank you so much for coming on again. And well, you're quite welcome. Yes, and I hope um, you know we get to meet this year somewhere, and I'll uh, I'll have uh, I'll tell Lori, and Lori will will tell you if I'm going to be able to come anywhere. And I hope you have a great day and be safe out there in Reno, Nevada. Well, thanks. Same, same back at you. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. Sharon Baird. Ain't she a sweetheart? I just love talking to her, and I'm glad we got to catch up a little bit on not just Lord of the Rings, but also some Croft stuff, too. Love talking to her. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.